Hey folks, welcome back to the Pursuit of Wealth. It's Rod with Power Group, and in today's video, we're going to discuss uh, the gap up that we saw today in stocks and tech absolutely crushing it today. We're going to discuss some news and events. We'll review a couple of trade reviews that I'm in and some indice overview on the charts. And we'll look at a couple of individual stocks and I'll give you my summary on where I think we are and where we're going. So before we jump into the content, if you could smash like and subscribe to the channel, be notified on any future updates. We post daily market recaps every day, Monday through Friday, and take the little bell, you'll be notified on the next update. So taking a look at the first news and event uh, for the week, we have the US uh, presidential debate, which is scheduled for tomorrow. That'll be Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. And we also have some economic data uh, coming out on Thursday, and we also have the jobs reports on, on Friday. So this will be the last job report for September before the, the presidential election. And we also have the initial jobless claims uh, continuing into the end of the week as well. And we also saw that Ontario declared a second wave today. We saw 700 new cases, which was the most since the pandemic began. So Doug Ford confirmed that they are in a second wave. So we'll have to monitor that throughout the, the rest of the week. We do know that UK is, is starting to go through lockdown. Madrid and Spain is going on a lockdown. So there's a increased chance and probability that we could potentially see this throughout all of the nation and potentially into our neighbors in the South, the United States. So we'll keep an eye on the second wave developments going into this week and into tomorrow. Uh, we are rallying based off of the hopes of a stimulus bill. So we saw that Nancy Pelosi and Steve Mnuchin are basically um, of the thinking that they can reach a deal. So we'll have to see, they're, they're talking about having a deal in place uh, by the end of the week. So we'll see if there's any uh, legitimacy to that. Um, so trade review, if you watch the video from Friday, I did take a position in SPXS and SQQQ. And I added to those positions today. And um, I do expect that we're potentially going to top out and just go choppy into the next day, uh, into the uh, into the, de the debate. So I, I don't expect there to be much movement to the upside or the downside. Um, we'll monitor it again tomorrow. Like I said, anything news related could change that, but I'm not seeing much of a, of a volatility going into that debate. I'd say we see um, uh, Wednesday morning, we could probably see some increased volatility. So taking a look at SPY on the daily chart, you can see here we had a huge gap up, a little bit of profit taking into the day today. So we, we are forming a doji, we are holding EMA 12 support, but you can see that the volume uh, is a little bit lackluster here. We are seeing decreasing uh, bull volume for the last three days while we're, while we're trending up. So generally that's, we want to see increasing bull volume. Um, so definitely bulls have a, a lot of room here to form a daily higher low. So if we open tomorrow, fill the gap, potentially gap down, or um, we fill that gap tomorrow, that would be a nice area potentially for a higher low. But like I said, bulls definitely have lots of, uh, lots of room here to form a daily higher low and attempt a daily trend change. And as you can see into the, bell this morning once the bell rang we did see some sell-off there and uh, some hourly consolidation we hadn't consolidated on the hourly uh, since that since that move up from Friday so from Friday we never saw any hourly consolidation we basically just straight moonshot up off of that stimulus deal and we got our hourly consolidation to begin the morning and we are trying to set another hourly higher low now you can see that the Sell volume here is getting quite heavy into the end of the day. And we are over the 50 day moving average on SPY. So we'll see where we close. We got about four minutes left. Uh, so we're at 333.98. The moving average is 71, 333.71. So we are set to close potentially right above that 50 day moving average. Bulls would love to see that to confirm that that is support and could potentially look to add to those gains tomorrow. And on the weekly chart, I did want to play devil's advocate here uh, just for a second. So we could potentially st still be seeing a weekly bear flag. If we don't get above 336 on SPY, I would consider anything below that 
a possibility of a daily bear flag. So if we get above 336, um, I would expect that we've negated that, that bear flag. But right now that would bring us down here to a target of about 300 or, or just below if that, uh, if that bear flag were to confirm. So we'll just draw it out there for you folks. Uh, so you can see here, it bring us down to our last weekly higher low, which was down at the 296 area, 296.74. So like I said, bulls uh, have lots of room to form a daily higher low. So if we do lose the hourly trend, then we can be confident that the daily higher low or lower high is set. Um, and then our daily consolidation is underway. And then we'll look to, like I said, set a, an hourly higher low here into the end of the day. But um, it's going to be really important here how we close in three minutes. So we'll check back in on that in just a moment. But taking a look at SQ, uh, sorry, QQQ on the weekly could still be a weekly bear flag as well. Huge gap up today. Decreasing bull volume, not a great sign. We do have daily resistance here at... 280.36, so that'll be the next most important uh, daily resistance. And taking a look at the hourly, you can see here we didn't change the hourly trend yet. Um, again, we didn't form an hourly higher low, so into the beginning of the day, we saw a uh, significant sell-off, likely due to profit-taking, gap up serve for selling. And then that's when we saw um, the hourly higher low, and we do have some increasing bull volume here into the end of the day. Uh, but we do have resistance at 277.13, which we did we failed to break at 276.91. So we'll see where we close on QQQ going into the end of the day. And we have 50-day moving average support at 273.67. So it looks like the tech bulls are going to close well, well above that. So we'll, like I said, we'll check back here in a couple of minutes. About one minute left. Looks like we're potentially going, we're, we are seeing some volume picking up in, in SPY on the sell side. Got about 40 seconds left of the day, 43 seconds. And again, it's going to be very telling if we close above the 33370. And what I could potentially see them doing is, is trapping people here. This could be a bull trap. Uh, we did change the daily trend on on QQQ as well. So see here we had a higher, a low, a high, higher low, and higher high. So we are in a daily uptrend right now on, on QQQ. So this could be either one massive fake out or we could potentially be looking to see some, some added gains going into the rest of the week for tech. And the market is closed. So taking a look at QQQ, close near the high of the day. So we are in after hours. We did get over that resistance. You can see 277.13 and 277.18. So closed at the high of the day, very bullish for QQQ. Taking a look at SPY, we did close over 334.18. So we did close over the 50-day moving average. That's definitely a point in favor of the bulls. And gold, you can see we had a daily inside bar that broke bull. And now we can see the daily bounce is underway. Could potentially form some resistance here at EMA 12. So we're, we're monitoring gold. Personally, I think there's more downside to be had in gold. I'm potentially looking at an entry, but certainly not, uh, not interested at the moment. But like I said, I, I could potentially expect more downside for gold in the short term. I, whether or not the stimulus, stimulus bill gets passed, that'll obviously hurt the dollar. It will obviously help gold and metals. But personally, I don't, I don't think they're going to be able to pass a bill. Um, if, you know, we, like, like, let's think about this from a, a logical perspective. Um, we see that Ontario, we see that UK is shutting down. We see that Ontario, Quebec are starting to get a second wave. Canada, uh, Justin Trudeau, said that uh, he believes that we're entering a second wave. So if this happens to the states, they're, gonna need, they're probably going to need another stimulus bill. And if it's even worse than the first wave, then they're definitely going to need another stimulus bill. So in my opinion, I don't think they're going to approve a stimulus bill now. They're basically just doing this as a way to artificially inflate the market and prop it back up over these, these moving averages, these, these key supports. And what I think is gonna happen 
is they're going to just, these are, this basically going to go nowhere. They're going to delay it and it's, it's not going to, nothing's going to come of it. And we could potentially see some downside if Biden starts to win the debate and set the tone for the rest of the week and the rest of the few weeks going into the election. So I, I personally don't think they're going to pass a stimulus bill because what if they pass this one this week or next week and then we have a second wave and it's worse than the first one and then they have to go back and, and, and start another deal? Like, I, I don't think that's going to happen. So um, personally, that's what I'm, I'm expecting and that's what I'm uh, looking out for. So let me know in the comments below if you agree with me and we'll have to just, like I said, take it day by day and see what comes of it. But I'm not going to cover anything else for the moment. Gold, like I said, I was watching those daily inside bars, um, taking a look Apple. Apple didn't really see much today. Again, I don't think we saw that Elon Musk tweeted basically saying that uh, he thinks Tesla's overvalued today, uh, but it won't be in five years. It'll be worth more than it is now in five years. So a very, very big statement, right? But you can see that Tesla has, hasn't, really it's been struggling with the with the 400 and the and the 425 level right same with same with apple the, the it's struggling to get over 115 120 and i think that has a lot to do with the post split so anybody who bought post split who bought in the 130s or the you know the high 130s or the uh, the high 120s they're basically making it so that they can't get back there and and sell so i i, I don't think Potentially, a lot of people that are down, they, they're waiting for their break-even point to, to, get a, to opt out of the trade or to see if it continues rising back up. Uh, but personally, I, I think they're just, they're just uh, targeting other names and they're not targeting Apple because they're trying to prevent these people who bought post-split from being able to sell. And like I said, most people just want to sell break-even. Uh, taking a look at Amazon, uh, another thing that would line up well with a QQQ bear flag and a SPY weekly bear flag would be this head and shoulders on Amazon. So you can see they were targeting Amazon today um, as well. So could this potentially be a head and shoulders on Amazon? We'll have to keep, keep eyes on that and we'll see. Same with Microsoft. Could be a potential weekly head and shoulders, which would line up well with a weekly bear flag on QQQ. So two main patterns I'm going to be watching into the rest of the week as well. Um, we did have on, I did want to bring up the dollar here real quick. So DXY, we did have, we do have a potential daily bear uh, bull flag here forming as well. So if we take a look at the Fibonacci retracement, we want to hold a 382. So basically, if we drop below 93.90, I'm going to be very bearish the dollar. But as long as we remain above 93.90, I, I think that stocks are going to continue to be choppy and volatile and there's more risk to the downside for, for equities and stocks in general. So like I said, if we can maintain the 93.90 and above, so anything above 94, I think is very bullish for the dollar. Uh, we did have um, a weekly, a huge weekly move last week, and we are holding the EMA 12 support. So we'll see if bulls can form a base of support off there, which is 94.20, which they seem to be doing fairly well at the moment. And taking a look at the end of the day, you can see you're just looking for an hourly higher low. And we were in a five minute downtrend into the end of the day. We did form a higher higher low and higher high into the end of the day actually and so we had an, uh, an uptrend confirmed but then we lost the uptrend now we're essentially just going sideways could be a potential not the greatest uh inverse head and shoulders there but keeping an eye on the dollar i think the dollar gold and uh, are going to be the most important and tech going into the rest of the week Moving on from that, um, so like I said, weekly head and shoulders potential on Amazon and Microsoft, Tesla and Apple um, up, you know, a couple percent today. Uh, but I think ultimately they're going to prevent people from being able to, to sell. Um, so again, all eyes on the debate tomorrow. It, again, as a reminder, it's tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And we should see some volatility, I think, in the pre-trading or after hours on 
on uh, Tuesday and into pre-trading on Wednesday. And like I said, we have the job, uh, initial jobless claims numbers on Thursday, and we also have the jobs report on Friday. So very, very important week for stocks in general. Again, it's Rod with Powell Group. Thanks for joining us again on the Pursuit of Wealth. And we'll see you tomorrow for another daily market recap. Have a great night, everyone.